Indianapolis under yellow. Here's a replay of what got Michael Andretti in trouble. That's Mauricio Guzman just ahead as they come across the short shoot at the north end. Now watch Guzman went to the left. He's plenty low. That thing was slippery. Michael wasn't all that much out of the group. Watch him. Kaboom! He hits the wall. What happened, Paul, I think is that the racetrack has got some liquid that's very slippery there. Guzman was totally out of the way. Michael was just out a little bit. Well, there is some evidence that would prove that because about a lap later, this was Scott Sharp coming into the same turn, only he lost it well, well before the corner and got up into the wall. And then the leader of the race was Scott Goodyear. He headed for the pits. The stop was routine, taking advantage of the yellow flag. Nice smooth work. Remember, he is one of the drivers that is not a regular in the series. Nor are some of his pit crew regulars. Some of them were making their first stops in anger, so to speak, in this race today. And he stalled it. And then it was a little too far forward, and they also broke an air hose at about this time. So now confusion was raining over the wall there as they tried to get it under control, get the car back so they could get it started. Steve Horn, Finally, the team they pushed it back. told me this is exactly what they feared could happen because of the inexperience of the crew. Scott Goodyear finally got it going, and he dropped to seventh place. Mauricio Guzman is still the leader. We'll return with more of the Indy 500 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. News on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We're in the leader's pit, Scott Goodyear, and Steve Horn calls the shots for this team. Steve, you brought the leader in out of sequence. Why? Uh, we wanted to make a little handling change on the car. Scott says the track's pretty slippery today, a lot of rubber out there. So we thought it was an opportune time to make a handling change. The uh, car was getting held up a little bit in traffic. Now the traffic is creating problems. Now that pit stop took you out of the lead and dropped you back in the pack. You've got to hope that that chassis adjustment lets you run a little better because now you're stuck in the traffic. Yeah, we're back in fourth place, but uh, Scott needed to change. He felt to run in traffic, so now is the time to do it. Well, Gary Gerald, he's also running on the hard Firestone tires, the same style, the same compound that he qualified in. And doing a heck of a job. I'll tell you another team that's very happy with this turn of events. Remember back to the very start of the race, the radio problem for Robbie Gordon. He lost the lap. They just got the lap back. He's listed in the number six spot in the lead pylon. Derek Walker and company down here, very happy. Jerry? Hey, talk about happiness, Gary. They are smiling here in Mauricio Guzman's pit. He's getting excellent gas mileage. He pitted the first time on lap 41, then ran 37 laps, came in again on lap 77. So they're getting outstanding gas mileage. And behind me, Andy Brown, the engineer, is making the call. Their only concern here, significant right rear tire wear. And they are not using the soft tires Goodyear brought. They're using the tires that they qualified on. So we'll watch tire wear here in Guzman's pit. Paul? We should be coming back to green shortly. The pace car is already accelerating across the north chute. We'll take a look at the Valvoline running order here as they head back toward the green flag. Mauricio Guzman is the leader, followed by Tracy, and then the rookie, Andrew Ribeiro. And we're green. Here we go again. Looking for Guzman in the middle of all that. There he is, swinging to the outside. That's Ray Hall just in front of him. Dangerous part right there, Paul, winning his way up through the pack like that. He's right in the middle of it for a while. Paul Tracy, just a few cars back, runs in second place. Ribeiro third, Sullivan fourth. Sullivan, the teammate to Guzman, the leader of the race. Guzman and Sullivan both run for Pack West. They're doing really well. Black flag will be displayed to car 33. That's Teo Fabi exceeding the pit speed limit. They'll bring him in for a stop and go penalty. Update on Paul Tracy. Here's Gary. Paul, the crew is laid out. They're waving him on pit road. They believe that he's got a tire puncture as they came green. He's running in second place. This is a huge, huge disappointment. We wait with the team here on pit road. Tracy peeled off is on the pit road right now, Gary. There he is. He comes into the stop. They'll change, of course, all four. We were told they believed it was on the rear. Oh, costly, costly stop now. Of course, they top off with fuel. They're holding him, holding him. They're, they're making a Wickerville change on the rear wing. It's complete. He's gone. How many spaces did he lose on the racetrack? That's going to be the key. 
drop down to ninth place as he headed out. He'll drop further as he comes back up to speed. Oh, and there is right Johansson there. loses it. On Bobby, what happened apron, there? On the pit apron. Paul, I didn't see it. I honestly didn't see it down here. I was into the monitor. I did see it there. Right rear is flat there. Yellow flag is out again. It looked like a tire exploded, but why and how did it happen down on the pit apron? So Stefan Johansson, look at his helmet there. You see those markings on the side that are blue? They used to be green. Team convinced of green was bad luck in Indianapolis. Change the color. Here's a replay. Watch Johansson. Now he's clear down on the apron, right there, right in front of us there. Oh, right All rear of a sudden, went. the right rear tire shredded. That means it was probably low, out of air, and when they're like that, they just come apart. Then, of course, he has no direction. Now, it also could have been that he ran over something, and then they look like they explode. So, obviously, Stefan Johansson is okay. The pits are closed until the pace car groups everybody up. Guzman is still the leader. Ribeiro is second. Beyond the ninth running of the Indianapolis 500 on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires. Valvoli, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. And the beer that's colder, bolder yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. Back at Indianapolis, here's a replay of what caused, caused Stefan Johansson's problem. See that piece of debris lying out in the track? Now watch Johansson. Bang, right over it. That took the right rear. He very quickly dived for the uh, escape road, and his race appears to be in trouble. Jerry Punch, you can update this. We're in Mauricio Guccelmin's pit, and his engineer, Andy Brown, behind me, talking to Mauricio right now. But what Andy was saying a moment ago was they saw the debris come off the car right in front of him as he's talking to... Mauricio Guzman, they told Mauricio to possibly move to the inside. Andy, what happened with the debris? Well, the guys on the pit wall spotted some debris in the middle of the track on the um, pit straight here. So we radioed Morris and called him over to the pit wall to miss the debris. Excuse me. And as he talks to his driver, what happened? He missed it, but unfortunately for Stefan Johansson, he did not. Paul? Morris, that's what they call Guzman. Now let's take a look at the tires here in this race and how we're running with a Goodyear in front and then two Firestones then Danny Sullivan on a Goodyear and we'll take a look down through the field on this now the history of tires here at Indianapolis has been one of rich competition Sam Posey can look back over those tire wars every year since 1972 the winning tire at Indy has been built by Goodyear but a look at the race's 78-year history shows that Firestone has nearly twice as many victories. It was Firestone who won the first race, and for decades, their continued success made them synonymous with Indy. Ads annually linked Firestone to the race, and sales figures proved that winning sold tires. In the post-World War II era, Firestone rode the rising tide of Indy's popularity, and by the mid-1960s, their arch-rival Goodyear knew they could not afford to leave the performance field of Firestone. Goodyear wanted Indy, but it wouldn't be easy. After all those years of Firestone, you couldn't get passes, you couldn't, uh, 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 it was very hard to get practice time. It was a tough situation. The Firestone uh, racing director was on the board of USAC, and uh, they were, were really encouraging us in those days. Spearheading Goodyear's initial attack was A.J. Foyt, and after five years of intense effort, Goodyear and A.J. won, snapping Firestone's 43-year streak. The next six years saw the tire war rage. Drivers lured by large retainers took sides in a way that split the racing community and families down the middle. In 1974, Goodyear's technology and money forced Firestone out. As ads trumpeted Goodyear's success, Firestone watched as their rival reaped the benefits of racing. You look back to 1974 when Firestone got out of the Indy 500 and sales and market share had declined. They were eroding away. And in 1988, when Bridgestone Corporation purchased Firestone, right then and there, there was a, an inkling, a thought that maybe will take Firestone brand back to Indy to resurrect the brand. And then in 1991, that decision got studied very thoroughly, 
1992, late 92 we made the decision, May of 93 we made an announcement, and uh, here we are. Firestone's comeback placed Scott Goodyear on the front row, an irony that provided a light moment for the giant tire companies. I think Goodyear stands to gain as well as Firestone here, no matter what happens, because we're all getting a lot more attention for the right reasons than if only one tire company were here. And I think we're both winning at this point in time, certainly in attracting more attention to our mainline passenger tires. Nonetheless, when this race is over, only one tire company will be able to claim victory. Will Goodyear extend its streak, or will the new guys, who really started it all, get back on top? And Leo Mel, one of the principals, of course, in that piece is here live now. Leo, how many of your drivers of your 25 in the field have gone to your optional tire? Well, not all the 25 are left, but everybody, all but four tire, all but four cars have switched to the option tire as the wear, wear has gotten better. How unprecedented was it to bring in the optional tire with only the two-hour practice session on Thursday? Well, we've done that sort of thing before. We've got a lot of lab experience, and we tested it well elsewhere, so we were pleased to do that. So all in all, your evaluation of the race to this point in terms of your tires and the wear? Well, it's exactly what we expected. The prime tire was wearing out quite fast at the beginning of the race. Now it's stopped wearing out. We switched to the option, and it looks very good for wear. Thank you, Leo. Thanks, Gary. Still under caution. We expect to go back to green at the conclusion of this lap. They are, by the way, going to black flag as soon as they go back green. Tail Fabi car 33 again. And the reason is because when they black flagged him before and brought him in, he broke the speed limit on the way out. Saturday, ABC Sports travels to Dublin, Ohio for one of the most prestigious events on the PGA Tour. Join Jack Nicklaus as he hosts an all-star international field of golf's best in the Memorial Tournament sponsored by Dean Witter. Coverage begins Saturday, June 3rd, right here on ABC Sports. Mauricio Guzman is the leader. Andre Ribeiro is second. And Scott Goodyear, his teammate, is third. Stefan Johansson's car was brought around to his pit. They did the repairs to it, and Johansson should be back in the run. Dwayne Sweeney gives him the green flag, and here we go. Guzman, the leader. Ribeiro, two cars back. Scott Goodyear trying to move on Ribeiro. Sullivan is fourth. Gordon is fifth, back on the leader lap. Christian Fittipaldi, Gordon's teammate, is sixth. You ride with Scott Goodyear. We talked about expecting the unexpected, and certainly here we have a second-year man in the lead, Guzman, Ribeiro, a rookie following him, and they're both in good shape. Not a fluke situation at all. Goodyear tries to reel in Ribeiro. 105 laps to go. That means that in six laps, this will become an official race. That is, if the skies would open up, and that doesn't seem possible at the moment, but should the weather affect the run, once they've crossed the 101st lap, it is an official race, and a winner can be declared. Amazing, because the drivers went to bed last night amid thunderstorms and woke up with it still raining at about 5 o'clock this morning. And as you guys know, I can see all the way to Terre Haute, and I don't see any bad weather, so that's good news for all of us. Update now on screen.